Hey friends, you've heard me talk about HelloFresh before, and I'm here to remind you of America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh offers farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Now, I know a lot of you have told me that you are trying to sit down to dinner together as a family more this year, but what do you do about nights when your schedule is packed? Well, turn to HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals, including their 15-minute recipes designed to help minimize mealtime stress. I know that this time of year, everyone's looking to revamp their eating habits, so look to HelloFresh's wholesome health-forward options as well, like over 30 calorie-smart and protein-smart recipes each week. Go to HelloFresh.com forward slash Monica free and use code Monica free for free breakfast for life. What? That's right. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com forward slash Monica free and use code Monica free. Yay for HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Christian Parenting. Aloha, friends. Welcome to the Monica Swanson Podcast, powered by Christian Parenting. I am Monica Swanson, mom to four boys, wife to Dr. Dave, podcast host and author of Boy Mom, and soon to be released Raising Amazing. Here on the podcast, it is my goal to bring you practical advice and biblical wisdom for raising amazing kids and building strong families. You can always find show notes over at monicaswanson.com forward slash podcast. I'm so glad you're here, and I hope you'll be encouraged. But our family will come up with our family goals for the year. And I think it's so important to involve your kids in that conversation, no matter how old they are, because it models us being intentional about our choices and being intentional about our planning for the new year and showing them that, hey, it's really important to take a beat and to kind of like evaluate what's happening in ways that we might be able to grow. Hey friends, welcome back to the Monica Swanson podcast. See, I'm still getting used to saying that. Uh, I am so excited to be back with you in this new year, in this new season of the podcast. I just want to thank you all for all the support, your messages, emails, all the ways you have just encouraged me in this new season on, on the podcast. Thank you so much. Now, you're just listening to a short clip from today's guest, Emily Lay, who I really enjoyed getting to know. And I'm so excited about just the practicality and her, the the nature of the things she talks about is so good for a new year. And in fact, when it comes to New Year's, here's the thing. I move into the new year slowly. I, a few years ago, started giving myself permission to not be necessarily on my game on January 1st. That's a lot of pressure, isn't it? In fact, here's the thing. If I could, there's two times in our calendar that I would change. If I could change our calendar, I would get rid of Halloween. I'm not a big Halloween person. I would put Thanksgiving on October 31st, and then we would go right into Christmas, right? Two full months. Wouldn't that be great? And then instead of one week between Christmas and New Year's, man, I need a month. I think four weeks would be really beautiful. I'm just not ready. I mean, after Christmas, you need some downtime. You need to catch your breath. You want to put the decorations away eventually. And then you want to make the goals. You want to pick your word of the year. You want to do all that. And I don't like to feel like I have to do it all in one week. So if you need permission, like I did a few years ago, this is your permission to move into the new year slowly. So maybe some of you already kicked off the new year, you're doing resolutions, or you've got your word of the year, you're, you know, doing all the things. Great. That is fantastic. Uh, but I think what Emily is sharing in today's episode is so good and so practical for families. We often think of our own personal goals and all that, but how about as a family? What are some of the things we can do to have an amazing year ahead? Well, that's what Emily's sharing. Now, this is all in Emily's wheelhouse. As you'll hear when she introduces herself, she has a company called Simplified. She makes planners. She writes books. She is incredible. She is so gifted. 
And we're also going to touch on her new devotional called Sure as the Sunrise, 100 Morning Meditations on God's Mercy and Delight. It is really a beautiful devotional. And so Emily just has a gift in helping us simplify our chaotic lives. And it's just such a practical approach to our new year as a family. So I'm really excited about all of this. Uh, So let's dive in and share this conversation with Emily Lay. I hope it inspires you, encourages you and helps you launch into a really amazing year ahead. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. I am so excited to get to know you and your story. You are like who I want to be. (laughs) Have you always been (laughs) organized and like on it with like... I don't know. This this is your realm. If I could just hang out with you, I feel like maybe it would just wear off on me a little bit. But before we dive in, <laughs> why don't you tell everyone kind of what you do, your background, and who you are yeah. about your family too? Sure. Uh, well, my name is Emily Lay, and I uh, live in Pensacola, Florida. I have uh, three kids. My oldest, a boy, is eleven, and my twins are seven years old, a boy and a girl. Um, I founded a company about 15 years ago called Simplified, and we make planners and other organizational tools for busy women. Hmm. I also write books. I've written, I think, nine at this point and host the Simplified podcast. But every, all the work that I do really is around, um, taking an otherwise chaotic and overwhelming life and trying to simplify it so that we really have time to spend on what matters most to us. Wow. That's what we all need. And as we're kicking off a new year, especially now, what a time to just get inspired, have some hope for those of us who maybe don't feel like this comes natural. Does this come natural like 15 years ago? Were you already living this or is it something you had to learn? No, I, my mom is the OG. (laughs) She (laughs) is the, she's the queen. Um, She was, she was a working mom and had a husband and two kids and was very busy and, and, made it all look easy, basically. So I learned everything I know from her. And I, I've just always had a a real interest in like taking something that's messy and disorganized and trying to, um, trying to make it simpler and more streamlined. That can be a blessing. And that can also be a curse Mm. because that Mm -hmm. can be done everything. Um, but it's, it's so much fun. Oh, I can imagine. And I'd like to hear, you have probably worked with people, and this is a leading question, so you have to answer it how I'm hoping you will. You've worked with people (laughs) who struggle maybe, who aren't naturally good at this stuff, but can learn Mm -hmm. through just new disciplines and habits. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I... um... I don't think it comes naturally to most people. Mm-hmm. And I also think it's it's one thing to be able to teach it to other people, but it's another thing to implement it in your actual real messy life. Mm-hmm. So my husband and I are both entrepreneurs. We're extremely busy. Um, our kids are involved in all kinds of things. They're great big personalities. I mean, mm-hmm. it. I, I teach and write about the things that I need to know mm-hmm. because it, it's necessary here. So... Um, while I think sometimes simplifying your life can look like a big grand topic that's hard to digest, it really just comes down to, to evaluating where you are, um, kind of the same way you would a junk drawer, right? Mm -hmm. Like looking what's in it, unpacking it, making a decision about every little thing, and then finding a new way ahead, finding a new way to organize things and fit them into your life in a way that's productive and Mm -hmm. helps you to achieve your goals, you know? I love it. And you know, when it comes to exercise, I always say that if you get some new exercise clothes that are cute and you feel good in, you're more motivated. Well, to have some beautiful planners and all that, I mean, that's just like makes all the difference in the world. It totally does. I think that, that, you know, when you find a way to kickstart something, I think it's really helpful. But I will say, um, we have always said it's simplified. Like the day that we just sell planners is the day we don't want to do it anymore because it's a ton of work. <laughs> and so it's really about like the mind shift that has to happen when you are ready to achieve a fresh start. Like you have to make the decision that you're willing to put in the big and small work with your habits and your routines and the way you live your life to, to achieve that, to have a fresh start. So it really is a mind shift more than anything. Got it. Okay. I think that's good. And can you just brag a little, like there's a lot of planners out there. There's a lot of stuff. 
tell yeah. us some of the things you've done, some of the people you've teamed up with, because you're yeah. kind of a big deal. Oh gosh, thank you. <laughs> Honestly, like if you would have told me 15 years ago that this career would be mine, I would have absolutely laughed at you because I started this in my guest room. I was working full time in university advancement. I uh, had a master's degree in nonprofit administration. <laughs> I just really wanted to do something creative that encouraged and inspired other women in ways that I needed. Like Mm -hmm. I was a a young mom who just needed community and needed Mm -hmm. someone to tell me I didn't have to be perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, over the years we've been able to um, have products in Target and Walmart. We had big end cap in Target in 2018. Um, We've had nine best-selling books. It's really like, it's all very pinch me. We, we have, uh, some really cool partners that we work with, um, Draper Janes and and some others. So Mm. it's, it's, it's really well. She's really not bragging very well here, but that's, (laughs) that's just a little bit of a big list. So well done. Well done. And a mom that's involved in her kids' lives and Mm -hmm. doing all the things. So and yeah. What yeah. do your kids do? Are they sports kids? Are they, what do they do? They're into everything. <laughs> They're into everything. So I have one, one girl and two boys. Uh, my boys are, well, all, all three of my kids are really into sports. Mm-hmm. Uh, my oldest plays football and soccer and basketball. They kind of go consecutively where mm-hmm. we live. So mm-hmm. you, you play one and then it's over that and you play another. So and that really helps. So all three of my kids do, do uh, all of those. And then uh, my daughter is into dance mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's wild. Like it's, there's, I mean, I feel like a kid Uber every afternoon, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but they absolutely love it. And I always, I, you know, I have to gut check myself all the time about my work that mm-hmm. I started the company so I could be a flexible mom. So mm-hmm. I could show up and be the one to pick them up from school. Cause that was what mattered most to me. Um, and when we get to a point where that's not working out, it means something has to change. So yeah. it's a balance, you know? Awesome. Well, and the nature of your work has to help with that because you're constantly evaluating and reevaluating and deciding if what you're doing is represents the life you really want to live. And, um, you just recently wrote a beautiful new book. Can you tell us about sure as the sunrise? Oh, yes. I'm so proud of it. It's a devotional. So the first, first of its kind for me, I've never written a devotional before. Mm. Um, it's 100 morning meditations on God's mercy and delight. And it was born out of the deep, dark times of COVID <laughs> in, the bo- in the before times, as we call it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was early 2020, and I was just like everyone else. It's terrified and trying mm-hmm. to figure out which way it was up. Everything was changing. We were doing homeschool and virtual work, and everything was just m- moving very quickly and mm-hmm. in a terrifying way. <laughs> and we live on Pensacola Bay. And every morning I would, it just felt like Groundhog's Day. You know, mm-hmm. I would wake up to go do the whole thing again. And I'd walk outside on my back porch and see the sunrise. And it happened so many times in that very way that finally I just had this realization that like the sun is always going to come up. Mm-hmm. Even when it's storming, even when we can't see it, God is bringing the sun up. He never forgets. He never forgets us. And he does it with the same enthusiasm that he did on the very first day. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like that kind of consistency when everything else is changing is just so beautiful to rely on. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I wanted to write a book that would give women just a few moments every morning to reflect on the goodness that's happening in the very ordinary moments of Mm -hmm. their life. Um, and so every day has a little bit of scripture, um, a bit of a story, and then just some reflection and action items to think on as they go throughout their day. I love it. Just that yeah. steadiness. I love how that was born. That is such a cool story. Yeah. So yeah. good. And it's beautiful. So thank we'll have, you so much. Yeah. We'll have some images of it over in the show notes. Hey friends, I hope you're enjoying this conversation and I want to pause real quick to point you to some great resources available now over at the Christian Parenting website. Now this is specifically for moms raising daughters, which as you know, is something I'm really excited about in the new year. I get to talk more to the girl moms. And if you are a girl mom, I know you want to raise a confident daughter, a daughter with the right kind of confidence. And Tara Matson over at Christian Parenting has some incredible courses. She has a variety of 
based on age range and topic, and she's coming out with new ones all the time. Her most recent course is called She is Confident in Healthy Relationships. Isn't that an important topic? This course was made specifically for your fifth and sixth grade girls. So help us spread the word about that age range if you know someone who has a daughter in that age range. There are video lessons, there's conversation guides, there's a downloadable journal, so much good stuff. And you can check out all of these new courses at cpguides.org. Again, CP is in Christian Parenting Guides.org. You can learn more and purchase the course made just for the age and stage of your daughter's journey. So I hope you can check that out. And now we're going to get back to today's conversation. But I love it. And, and I love your heart for helping all of us uh, really approach our days and our life with intentionality. That's just a theme and all the things I talk about in parenting. Yeah. And, um, and I love that I get to talk to you here in the new year because I'm ready. I'm always like, I love a new year. I love a new planner. Yeah. I love a fresh, Same. clean start. <laughs> like, it's just the best. And so I'm super excited to talk about not just us moms, but how we can help our families and yeah. how we can really help our families have, you know, maybe a fresh approach to this new year. And I have listened to your podcast, which I highly recommend. You've got such good practical stuff over there. So we'll be Thank linking you. to that in show notes too. But I am um, excited for you to share with us five ways. And I know you got more than that, but five yeah. ways that we as a family can start the year off uh, right. Yeah. So that we have an amazing year ahead so that our kids are ready to dive back into that school, back into all the things they do and just yeah. have an amazing year. So why don't you start us off? And and I know some of, some of the things you talk about on your podcast, I like have to stop and take notes because you've got you <laughs> like cleaning formulas and things that really are, it's like, oh my goodness, that's so simple. That's so doable. And I, I need it. That. So please I love it. jump in. Number one, what's one thing we can do as a family to start this year off right? My very favorite way to start the new year with our family is um, we will go out to breakfast um, or obviously you can do this at home, um, but get your family around a table. Uh, no screens, no nothing. And we will take a piece of paper. Sometimes it's like the back of a napkin at a restaurant or it's a notebook paper or whatever. But our family will come up with our family goals for the year. Mm. And I think it's so important to involve your kids in that conversation, no matter how old they are, because it models us being intentional about our choices and being intentional about our planning for the new year and showing them that, hey, it's really important to take a beat and to kind of like evaluate what's happening in ways that we might be able to grow, mm -hmm. um, areas that we might want to improve. So like I, I have all of these. They're like pinned one on top of the other oh, in my kitchen. I love it. Um, but I have them going back years and years. Um, and like last year, uh, my husband and I both said we wanted to make our personal health a bigger priority mm -hmm. and our kids wanted to get in on that. So we hmm. started conversations about you know, what we eat for dinner and what we're snacking on and having lots of water and making our bodies strong and, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But I think it is. I think it's so important to sit down with your kids and say like, hey, what's important to you going into the second half of sixth grade? Yeah. Or, you know, what's important to you as you start, you know, a new sport or whatever yes. that is. I and it's it. just a great, great way to open a conversation with your kids about looking ahead. Absolutely. Just makes them intentional mm -hmm. as well. And since you mentioned you have them hanging up, I imagine yeah. you revisit throughout the year. Like, so how are you doing yeah. on this goal? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. true. And of course, there will be goals that you, you know, you go all in on for a couple weeks and then you forget mm -hmm. <laughs> about mm -hmm. them. But for us, like putting it in the kitchen by our calendar, it it's always there in front of you and it makes you kind of think like, oh yeah, I remember that. And maybe we should revisit that in a couple of different ways. Totally. Um, but it's a good reminder. I love it. Okay. Give us yeah. another one. Okay. So um, I think that it's important for families to also kind of evaluate their routines, mm -hmm. um, their morning and evening routines. That's kind of a point of, at least for my family, it can be a point of stress. Yeah. Like getting everyone up and ready in the morning to get out the door. Someone doesn't know where their shoes are. Someone's upset because they don't want to wear their hair in a ponytail today or, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> um, going through those routines and, and maybe just – and maybe you involve the kids in this. Or maybe this is just a conversation between parents. But mm -hmm. um, 
you know, what do those look like? Where are our pain points? Mm -hmm. How can we, how can we make them better? I remember when my, uh, my kids were really small and we lived in Tampa and finding the shoes every morning for three kids Mm -hmm. was a nightmare. And it was just like every day it was an argument. And so Mm -hmm. I would start like laying out the shoes and then, you know, some would get lost, whatever. So we got a basket and we put the basket by the front door. And so now, even even now, we still have shoe baskets. Mm-hmm. And it's where all the shoes go. And then it's where they put them on. And it's such a silly tactical thing, oh. but it really helps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like really helps kids get out the door, you know, Absolutely. with a happy heart. <laughs> yes. Well, in Florida, do you typically take off shoes when you go in the house? I know some regions of we the don't. country. You don't. Yeah. Some people do. We don't. We yeah. Don't here. So in, yeah. in Hawaii, we all do. But that means yeah. that outside the front door, there's typically 50 different shoes piled up. Yeah. And even then you lose one somehow. It's like the socks going missing in the dryer. And yeah. because I homeschool and my kids don't have to get out the door to school, it's usually Sunday church that we're yes. like, where's my shoes? And I can't tell you how many times oh my, my son has gone to church barefoot. Now we are in Hawaii and we have an outside <laughs> church. We meet in like a get pavilion, so it's covered, but he can get by. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, shoes can be a big issue for sure. Yeah. I love that. It's little things. It's mm-hmm. like there was a time when my kids would get, well, this is actually really recent. My kids will get in the car to go to school and I'll turn around and be like, I'm sorry, what you have oatmeal all over your face. Why did no one wipe your face off? And so I, I've started keeping like some wet wipes in the car because mm-hmm. inevitably someone's going to have food all over them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just like. Little things like that that you can proactively do just to kind of smooth the speed bumps. Yes. It just helps everyone start their day a little bit easier. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah. No, I love yeah. that. And I think that oftentimes there's something we live with over and over and we don't stop yeah. and evaluate and go, wait, if this is a recurring issue, yeah. let's get those wet wipes in the car. Like, what can we right. do? And it just takes what that pause to actually think through it. So I love that. Yes. Okay. I think that's Morning so and evening evening routines. At least yeah. as much. I mean, that can be a real stressor, mm-hmm. right? It it can be, especially because I think everyone's patience kind of wears thin mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah. And everyone, or at least for parents, we're kind of like, okay, when do we yes. get some me time, you know? Yes. But it's also such a special time to have with your kids when you tuck them in and you, yes. they want to unload their day on you. So um, doing things like we have this tall laundry basket and every day at the end of the day, instead of cleaning the house, I'm... I like my stuff to be like really put together at the end of the day. So we start the day, you know, clean Yes, and I will take the laundry basket and we will walk around the main level of our house, which is where the kitchen living room, you know, that all that stuff is. And anything that's out of place, we just put in the laundry basket. And Mm -hmm. if we have time, we'll go sort of by room and we'll go put it away. But most of the time it gets shoved in a corner. And then when there's time later, we'll, we'll put it away, but it helps us just feel like we're ready for the next day. I like little that. things. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Because then yeah. you're not doing all the work when you're exhausted at 10 at night, but it's at least yeah. put away so you're not looking out and seeing just a total mess. Yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. And then number 3, like on that same note, I think that when families are busy and when there's just a lot going on, I think it's important for us to schedule just like we would a doctor's appointment some mm-hmm. downtime. And that can be like a weekly, you know, couple of hours, an afternoon or a day. I don't know, whatever you have margin for. But um, scheduling some time where everyone puts the screens away, the TV goes Mm -hmm. off, and you have just a few minutes alone. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, what I, I try to do, we're not perfect about this, but I try to carve out time for every child to have some quiet time every single day. And mm-hmm. whether that's reading a book, reading a devotional, having a one-on-one chat with mom or dad, whatever that is, having just that time where they can kind of settle mm-hmm. is so important because our mm-hmm. world moves so fast. Yes. You know? Yes. That's huge. Yeah. And yeah. I think we need both the quiet time to ourselves, but also the kids probably need some time each day with mom and dad one-on-one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When our, when our twins were really little, we noticed, and I if you know anyone who has multiple kids will understand this, mm-hmm. but your oldest mm-hmm. starts really needing some attention mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, when there are little ones involved. And for Brady, my oldest, it wasn't just one little one, it was two little ones at mm-hmm. the same time. Yeah. 
And so we noticed like he really needed that one-on-one time to sit side by side and play Legos Mm -hmm. or sit together and let him unpack whatever he needed to say verbally. It's Mm -hmm. so, it's so important. And even saying this out loud, I'm like reminding myself how Mm -hmm. important it is because we've gotten away from it lately. Yeah. Um, But at the beginning of the year, it's such a good time to look at your schedule and say, do we have time for that? Mm Because that matters just as much as all the other stuff. It does. It does. And even as you say that, here I am reflecting. See, that's what I do in the early, in the new year. I'm always reflecting like, because I have kids who are grown now and my oldest is 23. And I think when he was 11, he had three little siblings. And I think he was so good at just being independent that it was easy to just be like, he's fine. He's fine. And so for anyone listening... (laughs) If you've got that older kid, like be sure to slow down because I do wish that, you know, sometimes now my youngest is 12 and I'll snuggle him because he's like my baby. And so the things I do with him, I'm like, by the time my oldest was this age, I treated him like an adult. Like I hardly ever snuggled him. Mine too. He's Mm. so, my oldest is so independent and Mm -hmm. just, I mean, he's an amazing kid, but he's like Mm -hmm. a 40 year old in an 11 year old's body. He's just so independent. He does his schoolwork. I don't. I know, have to get on to him about it. And it it is like I we will treat him like the third adult in the house. Yes. I have to remind myself, like, you're eleven. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you'll never weird. have that back. So yes. Yeah. We, we all need that For reminder. Sure. I'm glad you included that. Okay. Yeah. So Okay. Number so number four. Um, I think, and this is a really tactical thing, but my husband and I like to sit down um at the beginning of the year and we have sometimes we'll use uh like a flip calendar. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll use, we have a thing at Simplified and it's a a big like 36 by 24 yearly calendar that you can print out at like Office Depot or somewhere. Okay. And I, yeah, it's so helpful. Even if you don't like hang it up, it's so helpful to sit down and look at your whole year and, and say like, okay, we want to take a family vacation this year. When are we going to do that? And let's just pencil it in. Let's start budgeting for that. Like, yes. are we going to take any other day trips or anything like that? Let's just pencil those in. Do we have work trips that we already know about? Let's pencil those in. And you kind of start mapping out your year. And not only is it good just for your brain to kind of start to grasp what what's ahead and how you can best tackle it, but financially, it's so helpful to see what's coming and, you know, where you want to spend and where you don't and that kind of thing. So yes, I love yeah. that so much and communicating because sometimes I, as we're recording, I just was away on a trip. And I think the week before I mentioned it to my husband, he's like, wait, where are you going? I, was I, like, oh, <laughs> I probably should have talked about this a little more. So I love that idea. Yeah, we, we are the exact same way. Um, and I think, it, yeah, it's just so important to kind of be able to see everything all at one time. And then mm-hmm. I will take that some some years, depending on what's going on for work, I'll take that a step further and start mapping out like my podcast recording days and like those kinds of things so that I can communicate that to people who need to know. Totally. And I'm not putting it on top of other things and that totally. sort of stuff. Okay, super practical yeah. follow-up question to that. Your 36 yeah. by 24 calendar you, yeah, you ship yeah. those, right? Like, do they come rolled up if if we want? No, one? so you purchase. It's actually a file. This particular oh. one because they're oh. really hard to ship. Okay, so you buy you buy this. I think it's like ten dollars or something from our website, and we email you the file immediately, and then you can send it to like a printer, Office oh. Depot or somewhere. We'll do it for next to nothing, and you print it out there, and they will print it on like a very large poster yeah. sized piece Ooh. of paper. And then you just lay it out on your kitchen table and you go to work. Okay. That is something I'm going to order right now. I love it. It's It's very cool. It's so great. And not not only that, it's really pretty, but also Uh get some um, post-it notes, like the small ones. Yes. And you can use those to kind of color block. I'm really visual. So this is good. Like color block things on there, vacations and travel and whatnot. Okay. I'm excited. See, I could just geek out. (laughs) I love color coding. (laughs) I love it too. Okay. Give us one more. And then if you don't hit on one or two things that I've heard you talk about on your podcast, I'm I'm going to make your, I'm going to be like, okay, okay, we need seven, but go ahead. Give me me five. My my fifth one is really practical. I think that it's, it's imperative at the beginning of a new season to go through your house and declutter. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was hoping for. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) We, 
at the beginning of the new year, all my kids' birthdays are in January and February. Whoa. And so it's, it also kind of lines up where it's a new age, it's a new year, it's a new season. And inevitably, they've outgrown all their shoes, mm-hmm. all their clothes, mm-hmm. <laughs> nothing mm-hmm. fits. And so I will, um, some years I do this by myself. As they get older, I try to get them a little more involved, but we will go through and declutter clothes and shoes. We love to do this the week between Christmas and New Year's, but you can do it whenever. Um, go through their bedrooms, make sure that they're ready for the new year, fresh start. They can find all their things. They, you know, we've gotten rid of the the stuff that uh, isn't applicable anymore. We always say keep the best, the favorite and the necessary. Mm. Um, but, but going through your house and just decluttering as best you can, um, it really just sets you up for success for the new year. You know where everything is, you know what you need. You can plan mm. for that kind of stuff too. Okay. So good. So then yeah. part B to this is how about the cleaning part? Can okay. We, can we talk cleaning? Can you share your solution, which is super simple, but talk about like yeah. a good, because I know after Christmas, you you know, yeah. some people keep their tree up for a long time and that's cool. Not but me. <laughs> I'm kind of usually to that point where I'm like, let's have a fresh start, new year. Yeah. And if you're putting everything away anyway, isn't it a good time to just do a deep cleaning? It's a great time to do a good deep clean when the Christmas stuff goes down. We I will typically take my Christmas stuff down the day after Christmas. We, and I know <laughs> everyone radical. has other theories about <laughs> when to do it, but I am ready. And I, I also, for my job, like I have those two weeks off. And uh, so it just makes so much sense to use that time to, you know, kind yes. of get everything back in order. But yeah, we will, we'll take the Christmas stuff down and put it away and then do a major, a major deep clean, ready for the year, all of that. Okay. And so... Yeah. Can you just give us a quick step-by-step for like 101, you want to get, say, the kitchen, living room. Yeah, I've heard you talk through like just the really basic stuff of what do we do? Yeah. Wipe, wipe down what? Using yeah. what? So for me, if I was going to clean through like, let's say the main level of our house with kitchen, living, um, I... I would try to bake, break it up by days so okay. that I don't take on too much at once. Um, and do kitchen and living room first. And I will, I mean, the last thing I would do is wipe surfaces, but I would mm-hmm. start like vacuuming um, the floor. There's inevitably glitter everywhere mm-hmm. <laughs> after mm-hmm. Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, well, first and foremost, you're, you're picking up junk. So you're walking mm-hmm. your house with two trash bags, one to donate, one to throw away. Um, you get rid of all that stuff. And then you're doing, you know, vacuuming and vacuuming under the cushions of your couch. Oh yeah. And washing like pillowcases and and things that don't typically fall into your weekly routines. Mm-hmm. Um and then, you know, lastly, just wiping all the surfaces, making sure you're addressing things like your air filters, things that mm. need to be just kind of touched on. It's a great time, you know, once a year or however often you need to do it to just go in and and check on all those things too. Yes, I love it. Yeah. And isn't don't you have a solution you recommend that's like um uh laundry detergent mixed with water? Is that what you use? Okay, yes. So I learned this from Go Clean Co, which is okay. a great account to follow on Instagram. Go Clean you take, Co. Okay. Yep, you take a teaspoon of powdered tide. Powdered tide is magic. Okay. Like it can't be the liquid tide, it can't be the pods, it has to be powdered tide. Okay. And you put it in a bucket of hot water. Okay. And you mix it up. And it will get rid of just about anything. Okay. Literally. And like upholstery, surfaces, walls, upholstery. everything. Oh. Yeah. Because we we have a dog. <laughs> we have a dog. Today's his birthday, Yeah, actually. we do too. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah. No, yeah. And, he, and does your dog he, like to get on your couch like ours? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. likes to make a mess of everything. So like the powdered tide is clutch when you've got stuff to clean on couches. And, and there's no and bleach in it, and, I guess. So it's safe nope, to... No. Nope. Okay, so, so true story, since you mentioned the dog, we yeah. recently <laughs> took a small sofa, like love seat size, to yeah. the dump, literally because, <gasps> oh no! I mean, it was already old. It had like a tear yeah. in it. We had repaired it once. So it was kind of at the end anyway, but the dog had so taken over and we had so just given oh, up God. on the battle that all yeah. of a sudden I sat on it and I was like, this thing stinks so bad and my Gotta husband go. was heading to the dump <laughs> that day and he's like you know what this is really embarrassing it's time so yeah it's I time. should have tried the solution first <laughs> I don't know powder time <laughs> might not touch that but, but it, you can use it too on remover. counters yeah. stovetop I mean where where all do you yeah. use it 
we have a lot of white walls in our house. So mm. I, um, you know, there's always like fingerprints and whatever. And so I'll, I'll go to and, and wipe it off with that. And it, okay. it's magic. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Yep. I love it. Yeah. I love all of that. Okay. And, um, I love too, that you focus on a morning routine, uh, for yourself, yeah. for your kids, um, and no better way to start the day than with the word of God and prayer and yeah. your sweet new 100 morning meditations on God's mercy and delight. Sure as the sunrise is a great way to start the day. I know I try yeah. to get up extra early before the kids so that I can spend time with God. And I encourage my kids to fit that in first thing, go to mm-hmm. the word before the world, before they get on devices or anything else. So um, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad that you created this beautiful book. Okay. So before we wrap up, I would love it if you could share something amazing from your life recently. And this could be in any category, but really we're talking about raising amazing here on the podcast and an amazing being a pleasant surprise or something that causes wonder. So can you share something amazing from your life recently? Yes. So I love this question. Um, I have a new middle schooler and Mm. I had been told by many people that the middle school years, and granted, we are we are fresh into, we are like one semester into middle school, but I had been told that it would be a nightmare, <laughs> basically. Mm-hmm. It was going to be really hard. And it, and it may still, it may still be, I don't know. But I will say for my, you know, watching my 11-year-old start sixth grade and all within the same month get a little access to technology, get um, braces, start tackle mm-hmm. football, which yeah. I swore I wouldn't let him do. <laughs> and, but he's so into it and do so well in school. And it has been an absolute joy mm. these past few months to be a mom to a middle schooler. Yes. And it's we've had our trials with it. Yes. Um, we've had our tough moments, but um, watching him begin to spread his wings and mm. grow into the man that God wants him to be has been amazing. Awesome. I love that yeah. so much. So those of you listening with younger kids who are dreading those middle school days, don't yeah. <laughs> look forward to them. It can be amazing. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, if people want to just find you, your planners and your books and all that right now, where can they find you? Yes. Um, our brand simplified is at emilylay.com and you can find us all over social media at Emily Lay and also at Simplified. And then I also have a website uh, just for my books and it's emilylaybooks.com. So you can check them out all over there. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much for inspiring me personally. And thank you on behalf so of much. all the listeners, thank you for all these great tips and everything you do. Can't wait to keep in touch and um, get all yes. your good stuff. I'm going to order some planners now. I'm excited. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Emily. Appreciate you. Have a great 2023 ahead. Thank you so much. All right. Aloha. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I know I just felt all fired up and excited, just wanting to declutter my house, do a deep cleaning, get out the big calendar, talk to my family about goals. I just love this stuff. And you know what? Even if you're catching this like later in the year, anytime is a good time to get strategic and intentional with your family. So I hope you've been encouraged. You can find show notes to all the podcast episodes, past and present at monicaswanson.com forward slash podcast. And I always love to hear from you. If you leave a note over at the show notes, um, you can also track me down on Instagram. If we're not friends yet, please find me at Monica Swanson underscore. I love it when you say hi. I can get to know you over there as well. So guys, we have such a great lineup in the weeks ahead here on the podcast, and we are just about one month away from my new book release, February 21st, Raising Amazing, Bringing Up Kids Who Love God, Like Their Family, and Do the Dishes Without Being Asked, will be released into the world. I cannot wait to share it with you. And you can pre-order that book now on Amazon. If you pre-order, you will be locked in at the best price and the book should arrive at your home on the release day. So that's super fun. And you can also get my pre-order bonuses. I'm sharing four amazing interviews with my sons. This is so much of my heart and I just love sharing them with you. So you can find out more about the pre-order bonuses and everything else in today's episode show notes, which are specifically found at monicaswanson.com forward slash Emily dash lay. And of course, if you go over to my home website, monicaswanson.com, you'll find links to all the things there as well. So thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for being a part of this podcast community. Have a wonderful rest of your week. 
And until next time, aloha.